Naruto lays on his bed in his apartment. He's having trouble getting to sleep, because all that happened him during the night were playing over and over again in his mind. First he failed the graduation exam for the third time all because of the stupid clone jutsu. Why the hell did it have to be that jutsu? Stupid clones, it's not even a useful jutsu expect in pissing me off. How would a crappy illusion help anyone in a real battle? Was Naruto's opinion. Seriously though, how unlucky do I have to be for the single thing I had to do to graduate be the one thing I'm the worst at? It's like someone really hates me up there Naruto thinks as he continues to stare at his ceiling. Then after listening to that jerk Mizuki he stole the scroll of ceiling and hid out at some abandoned shack Mizuki told him to wait at. If only he had known. I would have disappeared completely and gone somewhere no one would find me. I could have learned so much more from that scroll. As is I learned one jutsu, one stupid jutsu before Irika sensei found and stopped me from learning anything else. And of course it was a clone technique, but as far as clone techniques go it's pretty bad as Naruto thinks with a small grin. After all with it he was able to beat down that jerk Mizuki, but it doesn't feel like that wasn't enough. I need so much more. I have to get stronger, strong enough that even jerks like Mizuki won't be able to threaten me or those I care for. Naruto says aloud before Finn all drifting off to sleep. As he slept Naruto had a strange dream, he dreamed of a god, no a goddess. Her face was beautifully shaped almost diamond shaped, but rounded long black hair that flowed as if an ethereal wind was gently stroking it. Her eyes held pure power almond shaped with the iris was black at least what he could see of it was, but the pupil was a fiery red taking more than half of her eye, her skin was pale the color of milk contrasting greatly with her hair and eyes, her clothes bold and brightly colored red and gold with armor plating depicting the sun. In the dream she said her name was Amaterasu, the goddess of the sun and heavens. She asked him three questions. Do you want power young one? Amaterasu asks him. Yes goddess, Naruto promptly responds before he even realizes. What would you do with said power? She asks him. Become a hero, the greatest hero, a legend, he responds without thought. Then I have one last question for you. She starts and pauses. Naruto doesn't understand what's going on, who is this lady, what is a god slash goddess, why was she asking him these weirdly personal questions and why was he answering her? But whatever was compelling him to answer also seemed to be directing him like this was all some weird show he got dropped in the middle of. Will you join my familia, Amaterasu asks. Yes goddess, was the immediate response. And just like that he woke up. The sun was up and he could hear a bird call as it soared over the village. Sitting up Naruto felt refreshed like he had slept for a whole day but looking over at his calendar he kept in his room to mark important days he found out it was just the next day. The next. Crap, I have to get moving so I can take my ninja ID photo so I can get my license. Naruto suddenly remembered. I don't even have time to do any of the cool things I was going to to make sure my photo was memorable. Naruto laments. Getting up he hurries to get ready and leave his apartment not even bothering to shower although he did comb and style his hair a bit, after all he may not be able to do the face paint or anything else cool but he'd be damned if he didn't look good. A few hours later, Naruto returned home. He got the photo over with quick, but the Hokage wanted a word with him. Old man, why did you have your ANBU summon me after my photo was taken, Naruto greeted like always. Uncowing that that simple rude greeting was all the Hokage wanted, to make sure he was still okay with everything that went down. Well Naruto, I was concerned you would do something foolish like cover your face with paint or do some outrageous pose but it seems I worried for nothing, Saruto masking the real reason he called him in. He he he. I was gonna, but I was up late last night and didn't have any time to set anything up, Naruto admits with a small grin. The Hokage just stared at the boy for a second before registering what else he just said. Something keeping you up Naruto? Saratobi asks concerned. It's just. I want to get stronger. 
I know I beat Mizuki team, but he's a chump and even he almost killed me a couple of times last night, Naruto tells him with a frown marring his face. The Hokage studied the boy for a moment, before deciding on what to do. I think I understand, but Naruto there is no shortcut to getting stronger. You may not have liked him, but Mizuki is actually a fairly competent ninja. There was a time when it looked like he might become a jonin one day, Hiruzen reveals to Naruto. How did he become so weak? Naruto asks bluntly. Because Mizuki expected it to happen without having to work any harder for it, Hiruzen says. Huh? Naruto questions. Look Naruto-kun. Most people start to get good at what they do and they expect if they just keep at it like they have been doing things that things will magically all work out for them, Hiruzen says. But it doesn't? Naruto says questioningly. No, it doesn't. The leap from good to great often takes more work than most people are willing to give and even then it might not happen for them, Hiruzen says. Why not? Naruto asks. The difference more often than not comes down to choices people make. Like I really want that last slice of chocolate cake, but if I eat it I won't want to get up early tomorrow and work out or I can do one more push-up but I'm tired and I can always do an extra one tomorrow. Those are just examples of choices people make that lead them to slip into bad habits or do things that stop them from pushing harder to attain their goal, Hiruzen tells Naruto. Oh. I think I get it Aji-san, Naruto says. Good my boy, but if you want a little advice from an old man. Sometimes the devil is in the details. If you really want to get stronger try to remember everything about what you learned last night. That really is a powerful jutsu. In the right hands it could be a powerful weapon, Hiruzen says and then goes back to staring out the window. Naruto taking that as his key to leave does just that by thinking about what the old man said to him. He was thinking about it so hard he didn't even pay attention to the young boy that bumped into him as he walked through the hallway. Sorry, Naruto mumbled half aware. Hey, the young boy yells turning to face the one who knocked him to the floor. Only the guy was already gone having turned a corner and seemingly disappeared. Jerk. Kanoamaru yells out in frustration. Meanwhile, Naruto had already made it back to his apartment still thinking on what his Gigi said. He had to be talking about the shadow clone jutsu, but what about it, Naruto wondered. However all thoughts of the jutsu were derailed as he took a look at what awaited him in his bedroom. Wow! Naruto yells excitedly as he rushes towards his desk. Sitting on his desk by his bed was a brand new computer. He had always wanted a computer. But they were so expensive that only clans and wealthy merchants had one in their home and even then it was only a few of those like of his classmate Sasuke was probably the only one that he might think would have won. But he wasn't sure, honestly he didn't know most of his classmates at least not well enough to know what they had. As Naruto checked it out he started fooling with the mouse, and the computer suddenly popped on. Wow! Naruto yells excited. He didn't even have to wait long for it load up before. Is. It. Wrong to try, top pick. Up girls? Naruto reads part of the screen. What kind of crap game is this? He wonders. Must be one of those eroge games I read about in that magazine, Naruto thinks. Despite what Naruto says, he's a perv. A big one actually I mean come on he is the one and only inventor of the sexy jutsu and had already figured out how to incorporate shadow clones into it to make it even better. He claims it's to bust perverts, but it's really because he's a big little pervert himself. After all they say it takes one to know one. That said as he looked at the forms on the screen and even ogled the ladies on it, he was hoping for an adventure game or a fighting game. That's what he was really into and always wanted to play one. As he looked at the screen he accidentally clicked on it and the screen went black. What the hell, did I break it, already? Naruto screams mentally and was about to do so verbally when he was suddenly sucked into the monitor. Where am I? What's going on? Naruto shouts freaked out by being sucked into his brand new computer. Hello again Naruto-kun, greeted a familiar voice. 
suddenly from out of the darkness walked in the supremely beautiful woman from his dream. It's you. Naruto yells as he points. Yes Naruto-kun, did you enjoy your gift? the goddess asks. Naruto just nods unsure how exactly he should even answer, but somehow knowing she was the one that gave him the computer. Good, there were other means of bringing you here to me, but this way allows you to be with me as part of my familia and yet stay a part of your world, she tells him. That's when Naruto asks a very important question. Why me? Naruto asks. To answer that I need you to follow me, she says as she turns to go back the way she came. As she does lights flicker and Naruto can see they're lit upon torches and they're standing on some kind of fancy floor that he'd never seen or felt before. Walking behind the goddess and Naruto can see what she's wearing better. Gone is the armored dress and instead she wore red leather shirt with armored padding on the shoulders and gold bracers on her arms. The bracers were not big and bulky but light and molded just for her and they appeared to have some kind of scaled pattern similar to a snake's but bigger. When they got to their destination which was the end of what turned out to be a hallway that seemed to lead outside Naruto got a better view of where they were. Welcome to Orario Naruto-kun, Amaterasu tells him. They were up high enough where Naruto could see practically everywhere. It reminded him of Kanoha only less green and a lot more buildings of a strange design. Honestly it was beautiful, but he needed to see more and up close. Orario is a special city built around a dungeon. In this city, gods have come from the heavens to be among you humans to watch as they grow and change. Our favorites are the adventurers who become our family or familia as it's called in this world. The adventurers flock here to find fame, fortune, live out their wildest dreams, and some to be heroes. That's where you come in Naruto-kun, the age of heroes in this world is about to begin again and I have a need for a hero of my own. You have the potential to be the greatest hero Naruto-kun both here and in your own world Amaterasu tells him. How would this work? Naruto asks. You'll travel between worlds using the computer I gave you and the game to come here once the day is over in your own world. Once here you go to the dungeon to kill the monsters that appear in the dungeon and once you're done at night you will go to sleep in a bed at our familia's home base. When you wake up you'll find yourself back in your home world refreshed and ready to start a new day. As you get stronger you will go deeper into the depths of this dungeon, but you'll have to have help in the form of other adventurers to go deeper. I will also help you as my goal is to have the strongest familia in Orario, Amaterasu tells him. How will I get stronger? Naruto asks. Well first adventurers can gain the ability to use magic, kind of like your ninja jutsu. In fact the magic I am going to grant you is based off the jutsu you learned last night called doppelganger, which is a more advanced form of your shadow clone jutsu, Amaterasu tells him. Clones. Why can't I get something cool like exploding fireballs? Naruto complains. Naruto while those would be cool, your clone jutsu is also extremely cool and useful. The dungeon is a terrible place to be if you're by yourself. Unfortunately I am new to Orario so I don't have any other familia members except you for now. Eventually that will change, but for now it's just the two of us. However, with the magic ability doppelganger you will always have someone right there with you to watch your back, Amaterasu tells him. But clones are only good to take one hit and then they go poof, Naruto tells her. Not doppelganger, whereas shadow clones divide your chakra so it depletes your chakra and is a weaker version of you. Doppelganger doesn't take any of your magic to create and it's as strong, tough, and durable as you are. The only drawback being you can't create multiples of you. One is all you get and once you use your magic up it will also disappear like a shadow clone would only not by poofing out, it'll just fade away, Amaterasu explains. Can my doppelganger use magic too? Naruto asks. Yes, and before you ask the doppelganger will start off with as much magic as you had when you cast it, she answers. So, if I dispel it before it dies, do I get its remaining magic, Naruto asks. No, likewise you will not gain any experience or skills it may acquire. Every time you use it doppelganger literally becomes another person, 
it's just linked to you. It's like an extra pair of hands slash eyes, she tells him. Okay, is that the only spell I will be able to use? Naruto asks. No you can actually learn up to three magics, but since you're human unless I give you one like I did with Doppelganger or you save up money to buy a grimoire you might not get any more magic, Amaterasu informs him. Where can I find a grimoire? Naruto asks. This building is called the Tower of Babel, it was placed on top of the dungeon so that the guild master can keep control of it. If you go down there are four floors starting with the fourth floor up to the eighth floor where you can find all types of shops for adventurers. There are also many shops out in the city that cater to adventurers and non-adventurers as well but finding a grimoire that will allow you to do magic is rare Naruto kun and very expensive, you will have to build up a lot of valis, which is the currency in this world, she answers. Valis, how do I do that? Naruto asks. By going into the dungeon and defeating the monsters. The monsters drop items that can be exchanged at the guild's main building called Pantheon, they also do other services for adventurers there including advise them and giving new adventurers weapons and armor for a small price which I will give you. After all I plan to make you my Captain Naruto Kuen, Amaterasu tells him. Captain? Naruto questions. The gods of Orario create familias and are called the founders of their familia, in your world you would call them clans only familia aren't related by blood. Of course we gods have our favorites and they are usually their strongest children that help the god run the familia and are called captains. I'm making you my captain, which means you have to grow strong Naruto kun and help me find other members of our familia so that we can grow strong together and become the top familia in Orario, Amaterasu answers. Hi. Amaterasu-sama, Naruto answers. Now none of that Naruto-kun, continue to call me by name or if you must Amaterasu-chan or Amaterasu-chama, she directs with slight teasing grin. Hi, Amaterasu-chan, Naruto replies. Good, one of the things I like about you Naruto-kun is you treat everyone the same although you need to be careful. Orario is a lot like your village in that some people will not like it if you don't do the typical things like address us gods in a more formal manner, she warns. Naruto nods, knowing that could become a problem if he were to really become her captain. He'll have to abide by the customs until he figures things out more. But for now we should get you to the Pantheon building and register you as an adventurer under my familia's banner, Amaterasu says as she shows him the way to exit the tower. They made their way to the guild building pantheon as Amaterasu showed Naruto around a little before getting there and discussed a few other matters. Like because he was traveling between two worlds when he logged into the game he would lose everything from the Naruto world including the Kyubi no Yoko's chakra slash magic although she did say he would continue to have the increased healing ability as that was something gifted to him through his lineage, though he didn't know what she meant by lineage, he would ask later. It worked the same for things from the adventurer world as Naruto decided to coin it. However, what he could take was the training and physical abilities he would gain in both worlds even if he couldn't use the skills slash jutsu slash magic gained from them. So stuff like taijutsu, weapons training although not jutsu or the actual weapons he might gain from either world sadly. Once they got to the pantheon building they were both able to fully register. Amaterasu established her familia as a legitimate familia of Orario and Naruto registered as an adventurer and member of Amaterasu's familia. Naruto was able to get an advisor that set him up with a katana blade, Amaterasu's suggestion, and a set of armor that was clearly meant to be replaced sooner than later. His advisor's name was Rose Fanet, and Naruto nearly fainted when he saw her initially and hoped she would be his advisor as she had beautiful flowing red hair and a tough personality which Naruto is beginning to think is his thing thinking back on his love of Sakura, or was it the hair? She then had him sit through an explanation of the dungeon and the monsters within. She then gave him a rough map drawing, but told him as he went about exploring he would have to fill in the details and what not. She then point blank told him she didn't date adventurers and that he shouldn't even consider asking her out on a date, yeah that kind of sunk in he had to ask, so he did and she rejected him harshly. Naruto did appreciate that she used her words and not her fists like someone else he knew, still undaunted Naruto told her. Just you wait Rose-chan, I'll get you to say yes one of these days. 
Naruto yelled loud enough for everyone in the vicinity to hear. Then he ran out, not hearing Rose tell him to stay as they weren't done with their meeting. As he ran out of the building Naruto found Amaterasu was waiting for him and she directed him to follow her back to the dungeon. As they walked she told him that gods were not permitted to enter the dungeon because if she did the monsters would be incredibly difficult to defeat as they would try to kill her, but she wanted him to try the first level tonight so he would understand. So he did. Amaterasu sat on a bench outside of the tower dungeon as Naruto went in only to find herself meeting another goddess she hadn't seen in a while. Oh my god Amaterasu, is that you? Called the other goddess. Hello Hestia, what brings you here at this time of day? Amaterasu questions. Oh, I just found the first member of my familia and he was anxious to start battling monsters, Hestia responds. What about you Amaterasu, I didn't even know you had come down from the heavenly realms, Hestia says. I'm also here with the first member of my familia, she answers. Oh wow, that's awesome then again it's no surprise a goddess like you would have little trouble attracting people to her familia. Did you bless him already? Hestia says. Of course I would not send him into peril without giving him my blessing first, Amaterasu answers angrily. Okay, okay, sorry just it's important that we look out for them you know. What race are they? Hestia asks. He's a human from an overseas land, Amaterasu answers. Oh so he's like my bell, I hope they become good friends, Hestia says with a smile. Amaterasu also smiles and nods as they went on to chat with Hestia telling Amaterasu about Orario and what she knew of the other gods and goddesses. Naruto found his way to the first floor of the dungeon rather easily and his first monster, a fly literally called a dungeon fly that emitted a green light. It was an easy kill as he just sliced it open with his katana. Of course he gained nothing from it except a tiny amount of experience points so he kept going further killing more flies. He didn't face a real monster in his opinion until he stumbled upon a weird bird with fluffy looking yellow green feathers unfortunately it saw him and ran away, but as he was chasing the thing which was really fast he ran up on it using his momentum ran it through with his katana. He was lucky enough to receive a small fragment of a monster stone and a drop item. After picking up the fragment and the item he kept running in the direction he saw the bird go only to be ambushed by a bunch of goblins. Thankfully he remembered his advisor telling him that they were weak, but didn't give much other detail, probably should have ran out after asking for a date, but it happened so he steeled himself and started fighting killing a couple rather easy before more swarmed him and this is when a kid with white hair and red eyes jumped into the fry and started killing them with him. In no time they had killed all of the goblins. As they started picking up the stones and few drops Naruto decided to introduce himself. The name is Naruto Uzumaki and I'm going to be a hero. Naruto loudly proclaims. I'm Bell Cranel, um. I'm going to be a two, Bell replies. Smiling Naruto walked over and extended his hand which Bell took as they both shook on it. Good to know, do you want to team up for a bit and clear the first floor? Naruto asks confident. Sure. Bell replies happy to have met a nice person for once. Alright, how about we split the loot evently 50 to 50? Naruto asks. Alright, Bell responds happy. Okay, then let's get going. Naruto cheers as he starts walking forward. Naruto and Bell spent hours in the dungeon even attempting the second floor on their first day managing to kill a dungeon lizard before going back up the stairs and heading out of the dungeon making a couple of more kills as they went, but Naruto never saw that bird again. He'll have to ask his advisor about it. As they walked Bell was immediately accosted. Bell, was all Naruto heard before tiny woman with huge boobs jumped on Bell. Naruto watched for a moment before seeing his goddess was waiting on him. I see you met Bell Cranel, Amaterasu says. Yeah he helped me out when a bunch of goblins ambushed me on the first floor, Naruto admits. But you saw how dangerous the dungeon can be for rookies on their own? Amaterasu questions. Naruto nods. Good, that's all I wanted you to experience tonight, Amaterasu besides walking away. Naruto. Hey what's up? 
Naruto asks Bell. I just wanted to ask if you would want to team up again tomorrow? Bell asks. I might not be here until the afternoon. Naruto says. That's okay, I'm sure I can find other people to join until you come. I'll just be hanging out on the first floor again, Bell says. Alright, sounds like a plan. If I can get here sooner I will, Naruto says. Cool, see you later Naruto, Bell says as he runs off. Naruto just waves and then runs off after Amaterasu. He soon caught up with her as she hadn't gone far. We should go back to the Pantheon building and exchange your stones and drops, Amaterasu says. Okay, Naruto agrees. Upon entering they found that there were a few adventurers including Bell who was talking to his advisor, that seemed to be giving him a lecture of sorts. Glad she's not my advisor, Naruto thinks as she seemed like a female Irika type. For him it was a simple process of handing over his bag of stones and drops and collecting what they gave him. Apparently the free sword and armor they gave him, weren't free. Part of his reward was assumed by the guild and apparently as the only member of a new familia he was expected to pay the guild tax due monthly and like rent they were expected to pay last month's as well as this month's. It just really pointed to the need for more familia members, although because he was basically a party of one their tax was adjusted to reflect that. All that is to say that even with a couple of dropped items Naruto received 500 valis which he split with his goddess. Needless to say it had been a day slash night and Naruto was exhausted. Honestly he couldn't remember a time he felt so tired. Luckily Hestia had clued Amaterasu into a place they could rent for cheap. It wasn't much it was a studio apartment in a building near the dungeon. Naruto of course got the couch, which he didn't mind since it wasn't like he would be technically sleeping there. However, before he went to sleep Amaterasu told him to expect a few gift from her as thanks for joining her familia in his own world. It didn't take Naruto long to fall asleep a jacket made do as a makeshift pillow. As he faded away Amaterasu promised things would get better. Next day. Naruto awoke bright and early feeling completely refreshed. He stretched for a minute and then looked over at his desk. It was real, Naruto thinks as he sees the CPU there on his desk. However, laying beside it was a jutsu scroll and a sword leaning against his desk. Naruto was immediately drawn to the sword. Its sheath had a picture of a white wolf with flame surrounding its wings looking up at a sun. Grasping the sword Naruto unsheathed it finding a reddish-orange blade, on a gold handle, with a white and gold tsuka. It was beautiful. Naruto held the blade for a minute and then resheathed placing it back where it stood. He then looked at the jutsu scroll. It was a summons contract for wolf slash okami. Naruto carefully rolled it up and then looked at the calendar in his room. It was the first of the month and the academy just ended. They were not to report back to the academy building until the 15th of October. That meant he had two weeks to train on his own before orientation. Normally Naruto would head back to the adventurer world and hit the dungeon maybe hang out with Amaterasu but she had been clear about him becoming strong in both worlds. He needed to know how to do that in his world first, he needed help. I know I'll try Irika sensei first, Maybe he has some tips or pointers on things I can do to get better. With a goal set in mind Naruto gets ready for the day and grabs his two new gifts, because for some reason he felt he should carry them with him. Locking up his apartment Naruto heads out to find his former sensei. Irika sensei. Naruto yells. Naruto? Irika responds surprised. The man was genuinely surprised to see the little knucklehead. He didn't think he would see Naruto or any of his now former students until the 15th when they would give them their team assignments, not that Naruto or any of them knew that right now. Shikamaru probably figured it out, but he doubted the lazy genius would care to tell anyone else even his best friend Choji. Why are you here Naruto, it's not for another free bowl of ramen is it? Irika says with a slight glare. No. Not entirely anyway sensei, Naruto says. Honestly he hadn't even thought about ramen until Irika mentioned, now it was hard to remember why he was there, but he remembered. Actually sensei, 
I want to know what you think I need to do to get stronger, Naruto says earnestly. So much so that it surprised Iruka, Naruto was being serious and genuine with him and it wasn't about ramen. Maybe he would give him a little test. Okay Naruto, if you're serious about this. He starts staring Naruto in his eyes. Naruto nods in response sensing something is different. Do you remember how you would complain about having to do the clone jutsu? Iruka asks. Naruto grimaces remembering his worst technique and how it almost cost him everything. After seeing what you did last night I can see the problem was that you lack chakra control, Iruka tells him. Chakra control, how is that supposed to make me stronger? Naruto asks angrily. Let me ask you something Naruto, what is the key to most ninja techniques? Iruka asks the boy ignoring his outburst. Um, chakra? Naruto questions. Yes, now let me ask you how winded were you after you used the Tajukage Bunshin no Jutsu, multiple shadow clone technique? Iruka asks. Ugh, only slightly, Naruto answers. That's, amazing, but I asked you that question because I feel that if you were to work on your chakra control you wouldn't have felt tired at all. The reason why your clones often came out dead or incomplete is not because you lack the skill to make them, but instead you had too much power to make them. Chakra control is a tedious thing to work on and it often requires long hours doing small things like holding one's concentration on a simple point on their forehead. You hated the leaf concentration practice but it is usually the simplest easiest method in learning how to control your chakra, Iruka tells him. Now Naruto heard a little of that explanation and was kinda sorta regretting asking Iruka. He should have known he would tell him something basic like chakra control is the answer. How does any of that make me stronger? Naruto asks. Cuz idiot, even if you have all that amazing powerful chakra stored in your body it won't do you any good if you waste most of it doing a single ordinary jutsu, Iruka says annoyed. Right now you have a hundred bowls of ramen stored inside your body hot and ready to eat, but you waste at least half of it because most if falls to the floor since the bowl can only hold a cup full of ramen instead of a bucket, does that make any sense Naruto? Iruka asks. Kinda, although you're really just making me hungry, Naruto admits with a grin. I'm saying when you go to make a clone you pour too much chakra into the technique. You're probably using the same amount of chakra you use in making a shadow clone as you would a normal clone jutsu, Iruka thinks out loud. Actually now that I think about it. I did use almost the same amount, Naruto admits. Naruto the shadow clone is a B-rank ninjutsu that's mostly used by Jonin because most people don't have enough chakra to use it. The clone jutsu on the other hand is an E-rank ninjutsu that even kids can do because it takes very little chakra to make. It's mostly an illusion which is why it's taught as a beginning lesson on genjutsu practice, Iruka lectures. Way to rub it in sensei, Naruto grumbles. I'm sorry Naruto, but if you really want to improve yourself and get stronger, chakra control as boring as it may be is the first step, Iruka tells him. Okay. But does it have to be the stupid leaf practice thingy, there's got to be cooler ways to practice my chakra control that doesn't involve sitting for hours holding a leaf to my forehead, Naruto argues. Iruka looks at Naruto and decides. Okay Naruto, I have just thing but if I show you this technique you have to promise me you won't stop practicing it until you master it, Iruka tells him. I will Iruka sensei, believe it. Naruto answers. Okay. Okay follow me, Iruka says. Iruka takes Naruto outside the academic portion of the academy where the big tree that has the swing on it stood. This is called the tree climbing practice, Iruka instructs. But sensei I already know how to climb tray. Naruto started to say. Iruka knowing how Naruto thinks didn't wait for him to finish his thought and just started doing the chakra control technique walking up it and then up the branch until the stood over the little swing as if he was on solid ground. What, how are you doing that? Naruto yells. Calm down Naruto, Iruka says as he flips off the branch and is back standing beside Naruto. As I said it's called the tree climbing practice, 
but you do it with your feet not your hands by applying chakra to the soles of your feet in a fixed amount. To little and you either won't stick to the tree or get blasted off, Irika instructs. Alright, let me try sensei. Naruto cheers. Alright Naruto now to do this concentrate your chakra to the bottom of your feet, not too much, not too little. Then place your feet on the trunk of the tree, once you feel you have the right amount of chakra try to take a step up the tree, Irika instructs. Okay sensei, Naruto says. He places a foot on the tree trunk and pours chakra to the bottom of his feet unfortunately it was too much and had to jump back on the leg he was standing on to avoid the bark that exploded off the tree. See that's what happens when you use way too much chakra. Now try again only this time use less, way less, Irika instructs. Yes sensei, Naruto replies eager to get it right. Naruto goes through the same process only this time he slowly forced the chakra to his feet moving his foot on and off the blistered trunk of the tree. Irika watches for a bit as Naruto experiments and figures out the right amount of chakra to use. Eventually he makes another attempt and is actually able to stick on the tree. Alright Naruto, now stay there for a minute and grasp how much chakra you're using through both feet. Using your left foot only take a step forward, Irika instructs. Okay sensei, Naruto responds. Naruto does as instruct disabling the chakra to his left foot and then placing forward higher on the tree. Unfortunately he doesn't get the right amount and slips loosing concentration on his right foot, but instead of falling Naruto performs a flip and lands on his feet. Looking over Naruto sees Iruka was moving to catch him, but was a little too slow so giving a toothy grin Naruto without prompting tries again. This time he manages to move up the tree slowly first the left then the right. Alright Naruto, stay there for a minute. I want you to keep practicing and once you're able to climb up the entire tree, that includes all the branches top and bottom then come find me, Irika instructs. Hi, Sensei. Naruto cheers feeling happy. Irika watches for a few minutes and then goes back inside the academy building to finish doing what he sought out to do in the first place before Naruto interrupted him. Honestly it was sooner than Irika expected. Actually he didn't figure he'd see Naruto at all and that he'd have to go get him before he wore himself out and then treat him to a couple of bowls of ramen. Sensei, I did it. Naruto cheered. You did what Naruto? Iruka asks wanting clarification. I made it all the way up the tree. Naruto cheers. Alright, show me, Iruka says. And just like that Naruto runs out to the tree and when he sees Iruka is there he races up and down the tree even going across each limb from bottom to top before moving up the tree. Wow Naruto, I'm impressed. For someone with your chakra levels to get the tree climbing practice down in a few hours is quite impressive, Iruka congratulates the teen. Thanks sensei, Naruto responds beaming. You're welcome Naruto, how about we celebrate by heading to Ichiraku's. I'm pretty much done with work today and can finish up tomorrow so what do you say? Iruka says. Ah uh, thanks sensei, but I want to know if there is anything else you can show me? Naruto asks. He wanted to get stronger and not just for himself, Amaterasu-chan was depending on him too. Naruto turning down free ramen. I think I've seen it all now, Iruka jokes. No. I mean, we can get ramen after you show me something else, can't we? Iruka thought about it for a moment. Well he did show me he was serious about changing by working hard today with no complaints Iruka thought. Okay Naruto, you showed me something today. I only hope you continue to work hard, Iruka says. Of course sensei after all I'm going to be Hokage someday, Naruto responds with a smile. Alright, is there something you need help with or want me to show you? Iruka asks expecting Naruto would want a jutsu. Now it was Naruto's turn to think, jutsu was the first thing that came to his mind, but that's when he remembered. Sensei. Can you show me how to use a sword? Naruto asks. A sword? Iruka questions. Yeah, check it out sensei. Naruto then ran back to the classroom. Iruka decided to follow him. 
When he entered the classroom Naruto was at the desk he usually sits in during class holding a sword and a scroll. Deciding to see what was happening Iruka walked up to the boy. Naruto what's this? Iruka asks. My sword, Naruto answers matter-factly. I see that Naruto, but when did you get a sword, Iruka asks. Ugh, it was a gift, yeah a gift believe it. Naruto says. All right, let me see it, Iruka asks. Naruto hands his teacher the sword. Huh, it's a sword all right, Iruka thinks as he goes to unsheathe it. Wow, it's nicely made too. Who in the village would be willing to give Naruto a sword this nice, and there's something different about it, Iruka thinks holding it. He swings it around about, but nothing special happens. He then hands it back to Naruto. He wants to see something and he can't shake the feeling he's having. Hey Naruto, swing it around a bit, Iruka asks the preteen. Naruto does as asked swinging it around and almost clipping Iruka a time or two. Okay enough Naruto. Iruka says after nearly getting a second time. Sorry sensei, Naruto apologizes. It's fine. Iruka says. I know there is something different about that sword, and it's not just how it looks Iruka thinks. He then notices something is different about how the sun is hitting the blade. Hey Naruto let's go outside and bring the sword and your scroll this time, Iruka says. Okay sensei, Naruto responds. When they get back outside Iruka has Naruto place the scroll down and stand back away from here in a clear space. I want you to try swinging it around again, but point it more up towards the sun, Iruka says. Naruto does as instruct although his swings are clumsy, wild, and would probably count as an affront to any real swordsman if they were to walk by at the moment. Iruka watches and as he suspects it's not a normal sword. The blade goes from an orangish red color to slowly turning scarlet red and then stopped when it became crimson red. Naruto try using chakra as you swing the sword, Iruka directs. Naruto does as asked thinking this is another lesson on chakra control only for the blade to start to glow as he pours more chakra into and something else. Sensei, is my sword supposed to feel hot? Naruto asks. I don't know. Stop pouring chakra into it, Iruka says. Naruto does and the blade stops glowing. Try pouring more chakra into the blade again Naruto, Iruka instructs. Sensei. Naruto complains. Just give it a try, like before only more chakra, Iruka says. Fine, Naruto relents. He starts swinging the blade again with an upward arc to it this time while pouring more chakra into the sword when. Whoa! Naruto yells as the blade ignites catching on fire. He quickly drops the sword as Iruka grabs him pulling him away as the blade goes dormant, but reminds that vibrant scarlet red shade as it hits the earth. Naruto, don't lie to me. Where are on earth did you get that sword? Iruka yells worried for the boy. It was a gift, that's all I can say sensei, Naruto tells the panicked man. Naruto breaks free from Iruka's grip and grabs the sword again. Be careful Naruto. Iruka yells. I will sensei, Naruto promises. He then holds the sword away from his body and pours chakra into again causing it to light on fire. This is so cool. Naruto exclaims. He swings it around a bit watching as it even begins to heat the air. Surprisingly to him it's not that hot feeling a sort of comfortable heat as he waves the katana around. All right Naruto, that's enough okay, Iruka says. Relenting Naruto does as asked and stops pushing chakra through the sword watching as the flames die out and slowly it returns to the original orangish red color before he sheathes it in its scabbard slash saya. Naruto, we must go to the Hokage at once, Iruka says. What? Why? What about my ramen? Naruto complains. Because I said so Narchuo. Now let's go and bring that scroll with you I think it might be even more important than the sword, Iruka says. Huh? Naruto questions. However, Iruka doesn't answer and instead starts walking back into the academic building. Geez, 
Why is he freaking out like this? Naruto questions before following his sensei. Last time I go to Iruka about anything, other than ramen, Naruto thinks. They manage to walk through the academic building quickly thence to the purposeful pace Iruka was setting and after a fair amount of walking they made it to the Hokage's office where they waited a while longer to gain audience with the Hokage. It didn't take long before they were allowed to enter. Iruka, what has Naruto done now? The Hokage questions. And here I thought the boy was starting to turn a corner, the aged man thought. I'm, not sure Hokage-sama. Naruto says he was given a couple of strange gifts. I just thought it best you learn of them now, Iruka tells the Hokage. Gifts you say? Sarutobi mutters. Go on Naruto show the Hokage, Iruka orders the boy. Naruto steps forward holding the sword out still sheathed and the scroll. The Hokage walks out from behind his desk and goes to inspect the items. Naruto-kun, may I take a look at that scroll, the Hokage says more interested in it than the sword. Hokage-sama? Iruka questions. Sure Gramps, but be careful. I haven't even had a chance to sign it yet, Naruto says. You can trust me Naruto, Sarutobi assures. He unrolls the scroll and sees it's a contract similar to his. This is indeed a summons contract, but not for a group of summons like the toad, slug, or snakes, the Hokage says as he reads over the scroll. Summons? Naruto asks. Just prick your thumb Naruto and write your name in blood right here, Sarutobi instructs. Hokage-sama, are you sure this is wise? Iruka asks concerned. It seems to be a standard contract, these things are helpful and if you say Naruto-kun found it then it's his, but it's best to claim it now lest certain parties become aware and interfere, the Hokage says. Right, Iruka acknowledges. Go ahead Naruto. Do it, Iruka encourages. Naruto uses his sword to slice hand and places his hand on the scroll. Everyone is shocked when the hand print transforms into a legible signature and the scroll starts to burn. Naruto quickly drops the scroll watching along with Iruka and Sarutobi as it burns until it's nothing, but ashes then from the ashes a single white wolf pup with strange red markings appears. Naruto, I believe this is your new summons. This reminds me of when I first met Enma. Sarutobi reminisces. Although I'm not sure how Jiraiya-kun is going to like this. I'm pretty sure he wanted Naruto to sign the Toad contract like his father did, he also thinks. The pup gets up on four legs standing about one feet three and a quarter inches in height, over a foot in length. Greetings Naruto. Huh, who said that? Naruto asks confused. Who said what, Naruto? Iruka responds. I am speaking to you telepathically, Naruto. Tila what's it? Naruto questions. Telepathy Naruto-kun. It's a skill only advanced summons can do with their summon partners, Hiruzen says. The old man is right. I am speaking to you with my mind, the summons informs him. What's your name? Naruto asks. You may call me Takai, the summons answers. Takai, that's a cool name, Naruto says with a smile. Takai, meaning, the next world, yes Naruto, it would appear to be a fitting name, Hiruzen agrees. Well Naruto you should go get acquainted with young Takai. Don't forget about your orientation day on the 15th inch Hiruzen says. Wait Hokage-sama, what about the sword? Iruka reminds everyone. Oh right, well I don't want Naruto-kun swinging a sword around the village haphazardly, someone could get hurt, Hiruzen muses. Come on Gigi, I wouldn't do that, Naruto argues. Hmm. I'm sure you wouldn't Naruto, but just to make sure, tomorrow morning I want you to report to the academy training hall. Someone will meet you there that will guide you, Hiruzen says. Thanks Gigi, Naruto responds. Now run along and stay out of trouble, Hiruzen says. Yeah, yeah, I'm going, Naruto responds. He grabs the sword and walks out with Takai following. That leaves Hiruzen alone with Iruka. 
Do you think it's wise, letting Naruto keep a strange sword and even stranger summons, Iruka asks his leader. It's fine. I'll have someone familiar with the boy's ways handle him and determine if he should keep the weapon, Hiruzen says. Would I happen to know them? Iruka asks curious. But before he could answer Naruto came running back in with a lightly panting Takai. Iruka sensei you promised we'd get ramen. Naruto loudly reminds the man. Huh, I did didn't I, Iruka responds. Well. Naruto says expectantly. Iruka, you shouldn't keep the boy waiting, the Hokage says. Right, okay Naruto let's go get your ramen, Iruka relents. Yeah ramen. Naruto cheers as they walk out of the room. That boy, what will he get into next, Hiruzen thinks. A little later we find Naruto and Iruka at Ramen Ichirakus after Naruto gorged on several bowls of ramen. Hey Naruto, Iruka says getting the blonde's attention. Yes Iruka sensei, Naruto responds. You know if you really want to get stronger you can go to the library. They have a wide range of subjects that you can check out books on including ninja subjects. Now that you're a Vigenin, you have limited access to those subjects and of course there is the Academy Library, Iruka suggests. Ah, oh, come on Iruka-sensei, why do I have to go scrounging around some dusty old books for when I have you, Naruto responds. Because Naruto, I might not always be around, Iruka says somberly. Oh. Look Naruto, part of being a ninja, a big part, is gathering information. You need to find methods of finding things out on your own so you will be prepared no matter happens in the future, understand? Iruka says. Yeah. Naruto responds looking down into his nearly empty bowl. Cheer up, I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. I just want you to get stronger, Iruka tells him. Yeah, I get it Iruka-sensei, Naruto responds. Good, now finish your ramen. I'll see you around Naruto, Iruka says as he leaves after paying the bill. By sensei, Naruto says before he finishes his last bowl. But before he could leave Iam came out from behind the counter. Hey Naruto, who's this little guy? She asks. This is Takai, my new summons, Naruto boasts with a big smile. Summons, so he's not one of those Inazuka Ninken? Iam questions. Grr. I am quickly backs away when the little wolf snarls at her. Sorry I am, he doesn't like being called a dog, Naruto tells her. Then what is he? I am asks curiously. I want to know that too loser, came a new entrant to the restaurant. What are you doing here dog breath, Naruto responds. Hey. Kiba yells getting into Naruto's face. Kiba calm down, Naruto sorry for my brother's rudeness, says Hana Inazuka following her brother. Don't apologize to him, he's a fucking loser which is why he failed the genin exam for a third time, Kiba mocks. Slap. I don't care if he's your friend or not, but you will behave better than that or I'll tell mom how you were acting and I won't take you to Yakiniku Q to celebrate you becoming a genin, Hana warns. Okay, okay. Sorry, Kiba replies half-heartedly. Knowing that was the best she was going to get out of him Hana moved on to the reason she and Kiba stopped what they were doing and approached Naruto. Unlike her brother though, she knew it was a wolf. As a vet, it would be pretty dumb of her to not know that, but she also knew he wasn't an ordinary wolf. So you were saying he's a... Hana fishes. Takai is a wolf summons. My wolf summons, Naruto pronounces. How's a loser like you, who isn't even a genin, get a summons? Kiba yells. For your information dog breath I am a genin. Iruka sensei gave me his headband and everything, Naruto argues. Oh, no wonder the village was in an uproar the other night. Only Naruto or war could produce that amount of panic in the village, Hana thinks. He's right Iruka-san was just here with him celebrating again I am butts in backing Naruto up. All right, then where is the headband? I don't see you wearing it. Kiba continues arguing pointing to his securely placed on his forehead like a real ninja. 
I didn't bring it with me, because I was doing some super intensive training. Naruto responds angrily. TSCH, let's go Hana. This wannabe ninja is just lying like usual, Kiba says dismissing Naruto. You'll see Kiba, just wait until orientation day. Naruto yells at Kiba as he leaves. Sorry Naruto, Hana apologizes before also leaving. I hate that jerk, when I become Hokage he'll see. I'll make him perform the worst jobs I can find, Naruto threatens. Naruto stuck around a bit longer, talking with Ayam before heading out. He was going to think about maybe taking Irika's advice and checking out the Kanoha library, but he was anxious to get home and get back to the adventurer world. When he got home Naruto made sure to lock up his apartment so no one could get in while he was gone and almost locked out Takai who he forgot about in his excitement about getting back to the other world. Huh, what do I do with you boy? Naruto asks. I'm a summons Naruto, once you're gone I'll go back to the summons world, Takai explains. Oh cool, how do I summon you again? Naruto asks. Come closer, Takai tells him. Naruto does as instructed Takai bites him on his bicep. Ouch. Why'd you do that? Naruto yells. So I could give you a summons tattoo, now all you have to do is place some blood on the tattoo and then place the hand with the tattoo on the ground and I'll appear but you'll have to use a lot of chakra, Takai instructs. How much chakra, Naruto wonders. The form I take depends on how much chakra you use when you summon me. I use this form to meet my new summoner and learn about you. The next time you summon me I could be smaller or bigger, much bigger. It all depends on you and what you need me for, Takai tells him telepathically. Whoa, you read my mind, Naruto thinks a bit startled. Yes, you do not need to speak when talking to me, Takai confirms for the boy. Okay, so how much chakra should I use to summon you in this form and is talking to me in this way all you can do in this form? Naruto asks in his thoughts. To summon me like this again you would need to use what you use to make those shadow clones only ten times at once and this is one of my puppy forms. At this level it's just basic things like enhanced senses and one low level fire jutsu, Takai tells him. That's so cool, I bet Akamaru can't do fire jutsu. I have to learn more jutsu. Naruto thinks. If that's everything I'll dispel now giving you that summoner's mark used up all the chakra I had, Takai tells him. Anything else I should know? Naruto asks. Yes, I expect a treat when you summon me, Takai says. What kind of treat? Naruto wonders. Meat was all that was said before Takai left in a puff of smoke. I guess that should have been obvious, probably wouldn't like it if I brought dog treats instead, Naruto muses. With that out of the way Naruto proceeded to place the sword on his bed and then booted up the CPU. It took a few seconds and he was back staring into the scarlet red eyes of his goddess. Welcome back Naruto-kun, Amaterasu greets. Thanks, glad to be back, Naruto says with a smile. Hey Bell. Naruto cheered. Naruto. Bell responds. They fist bump and shake hands. What are you doing out here? I thought you would have been halfway through the second level of the dungeon by now, Naruto asks. Yeah, no one wants to team up with new adventurers unless they are a part of their familia or to use them and then take all the loot for themselves, Bell tells him. They do that? Naruto asks surprised. Yeah, I've managed to avoid them so far but there are some groups that do nothing but pick on new adventurers to steal from them and bully them, Bell warns. Oh, thanks for telling me, Naruto replies. Naruto looks around at some of the adventurers still on the surface and he could see on their faces. Looks of greed, anger, and vicious intentions. Looks like this world isn't so different from Kanoha, after all. They both have pricks Naruto thinks. Sure. But now that you're here we can team up again, can't we? Bell asks. Of course, lead the way, Naruto says. He and Bell enter the dungeon and just like the day before manage to clear the first level no problem. Although, Naruto didn't see that bird this time. 
he'll find that bird and get that loot. He already had plans for how he would spend it. Mainly he wanted a better weapon and gear. The ones the guild provided were already showing slight signs of wear and tear, like it was second or third hand. Plus, now that he's used it, he wanted a weapon like the one he has waiting for him back in Kanoha. I can't believe we're already at the second level, this felt much easier than it did just last night, Bell remarks. I'm not surprised, we're awesome. We could have easily taken on the second level yesterday, Naruto says. Yeah, let's clear this level too, Bell says. Naruto nods, eager to go further as well. Going down the steps to the second level upon entering they find themselves attacked by a couple of kobolds. They were easy to defeat with a simple stab both were dust. Naruto made sure to pick up the dropped magic stones. Going further Naruto was attacked by a lizard monster again a simple stab to the head with the sword given to him by the guild. Bell managed to take out another goblin. Naruto and Bell each managed to take out several more monsters, but it was getting more difficult the further they went. I think we should head back up, Naruto says. Really, we just got here, Bell responds. Sorry Bell, that last monster took quite a bit out of me. I don't have my normal amount of stamina, Naruto answers. It's okay, it's only the second time you've been in a dungeon. Take a little break and we'll head out, Bell says. Thanks, I promise I'll get stronger so I don't hold you back, Naruto says. We're friends, it's not a big deal. Honestly I'm a little tired too, but I just really want to get stronger as fast as possible, Bell says. Naruto nods, he wanted to get stronger too, but something extra seemed to be motivating Bell. Naruto wasn't used to feeling so weak, he really wanted to get stronger but he was twelve. In the back of his mind he always figured he had time as long as the old man was around everything would be okay. Maybe that was wrong? I really want to save up so I can buy better gear, Naruto expresses. Me too, but have you seen the prices for that stuff? A good weapon will cost 10 million valis at the lowest, a more, and magic can be just as expensive if not more so. The stuff we buy from the guild will have to do for now, Bell says. Still, I think I'll take a look around some other day, but first it's time to try that, Naruto thinks. Thanks Bell, I feel a little better. I want to continue conquering this level before quitting for the day, Naruto says. Are you sure? Bell asks. Bell really wanted to go further, but for a pair of rookie adventurers getting to the second level on the second day had to be some kind of record. He felt maybe he would push things too far and Naruto might not want to go into the dungeon with him meaning he'd be all alone again. And unfortunately while he treasured his goddess, he also knew she was a bit undependable and the likelihood of gaining more familia members were low unless he really stood out. Actually Bell was more than a little sad that Naruto was also a part of a new familia in Orario. He'd love to have a brother guildmate like Naruto and maybe help distract Hestia's affections. Yes, actually I have a magic spell that I haven't used yet that could help a bit, Naruto says. Really? Bell asks intrigued. Naruto nods. Please, show me, Bell asks curious. Doppelganger. Naruto calls out. Bell watched as it seemed like Naruto split in two amazed. Wow, I don't think I've ever heard of a spell like that and how did you learn it? Bell asked. Uh, actually it was a gift from my goddess, Naruto reveals. Oh wow, you're so lucky. I'd give anything to learn magic, but goddess Hestia couldn't help me, Bell responds. Sorry, Naruto says. Nah, it's okay, I just have to work hard and get stronger and maybe I'll develop a magic ability I don't know about someday, Bell responds optimistically. Can that happen? Naruto questions. Bell shrugs. Oh, well maybe we should see if we can kill a few monsters before calling it quits for the day, Naruto says. But what's it do? Bell asks pointing at the doppelganger. Let's find a monster and I'll show you, Naruto says. Okay, Bell responds curious.
It didn't take long before a kobold popped up Naruto rushed it using his sword to kill it when another kobold tried to catch him unaware from behind. Bell went to help his friend only for the doppelganger to beat him to it punching the kobold hard enough to daze it giving Naruto the time to turn and strike it down with his sword. Wow, so it's like you have another fighter with you at all times, Bell says. Yep, that's my magic. Now I recognize I need to have a second weapon handy or he's not going to be much use to me, Naruto thinks out loud. I don't know, until then he's kind of like a supporter. He can pick up all the magic stones and loot that drops and be an extra set of eyes if something strange happens that you don't see, Bell says. Huh, I guess. Naruto responds. You should talk to your advisor in the guild, she might be able to help you get some equipment for him, are you going to give him a name? Bells asks at the end. Huh, hadn't thought about it, Naruto responds after a moment. Anyway should we keep going? Bell asks. Yeah, Naruto responds. With the help of the doppelganger, who like Bell suggested, acted as their supporter the boys made it further into the second level but ultimately headed back up after a couple more hours not reaching the end of the second level. Still, thanks to doppelganger they were able to spend more time fighting and collected more drops. Together they managed to rake in 15,000 valis which wasn't bad. They split it evenly and since it was late they each went to their own guild homes and promised to do it again the next day. The next day once again finds Naruto back in Konoha. He remembered the Hokage set up a meeting for him with a trainer who would show him how to handle a sword. So after getting cleaned up and having a decent breakfast he rushed off to meet his new sensei. Once again he was back at the academy in the training hall, curious about who this new trainer would be. Upon entering the training hall he found his new sensei was a girl and already working out and spotted him entering the training facility. The other thing he noted was her ANBU mask, she was one of the elites. Hello Naruto, I will be your kenjutsu instructor until your orientation. You may call me Niko sensei, the ANBU lady tells him. Niko, sensei, Naruto repeats. Yes, she responds. Um, but orientation is in two weeks, is that going to be enough time? Naruto questions. I'm only here to give you basic instruction on kenjutsu after that it will be up to you with how far you want to go in learning, she tells him. Naruto nods, after all how many genin can say they were taught kenjutsu by an ANBU before they had orientation. For today we are going to have a series of fights only using our swords or kenjutsu, she tells him. Awesome, Naruto says as he goes to pull out his sword. Wait a minute Naruto, we won't be using our actual swords but instead use these, the Niko masked ANBU tells him. At that she takes a scroll from her waist and unfurls it revealing a seal which she pumps a little chakra into. The result was two katana-shaped wooden swords. These are called bakuto, bakken, wooden sword, we use these instead of our actual swords when training, she informs him. Huh, why? Naruto asks, because, if I hit you with my actual sword it would do a lot more than sting a little. Swords are instruments of death and you should never draw your sword unless you intend to kill your opponent, she answers. Gulp. Naruto could only wonder who this lady was. I mean he had been told about the ANBU ways and mentality, but he never believed it before. Ah. Uh. Can I ask about that scroll? How did it do that? Naruto asks. It's called Fuenjutsu, didn't they teach you that at the academy? Niko inquires. I. Naruto just shakes his head. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. It's a difficult art to learn, let alone master. There are very few masters of it left, Niko laments. What's it good for? Naruto asks. Lots of things. It can seal items away so they're easier to carry, it can create barriers to protect someone or something, it can be used to disable opponents, it can even be used to help in training if you know how. It's an incredibly useful skill to know and has many uses, as many as the user can think of if they're good enough, Niko tells him. Sounds cool, Naruto agrees. But that's not why we're here, now take this and get into your best sword stance, Niko directs. 
Naruto takes the wooden sword and stands with sword in front of him his legs slightly apart. Okay, I guess that's natural. Sword fighting has one basic goal, to cut, slice, or stab your opponent without getting cut, sliced, or stabbed yourself understand? She questions. Naruto nods. Good now in order to do that it requires harsh physical training, battle awareness, deception. Timing, keeping proper distance, and caution. Keep holding your sword, she directs. Your physical training will start tomorrow. I will guide you through a set of push-ups, squats, pull-ups, and if I think you're ready I will show you a technique that can double as chakra control training, she tells him. Aw oh man, I thought I was done with chakra control stuff, Naruto complains. The ability to control your chakra is a requirement of being a ninja. It's not supposed to be fun, but it's something you should do constantly and consistently. I'm showing you these things because I hope you will set a routine and keep doing it every day on your own, Nico tells him. Why? Naruto asks. Don't you want to be strong? She asks simply. Yeah, but, Naruto starts. But nothing, hard work and sacrifice daily is the only way to achieve lasting and worthwhile strength, because the moment you slack up is the moment you die, Nico tells him seriously with a pointed look. Gulp. I want you to promise that you won't stop doing the things I show you once we're no longer training together, Nico says. Naruto nods. I want to hear you say it, Nico says. I promise that I will work hard and train every day, Naruto responds. Good, now come at me with that sword, Nico directs. Huh. Naruto questions. This isn't sword holding practice Naruto. It's sword fighting practice so I want you to show me how you would come at me if I were a real life opponent, Nico says. Are you sure? Naruto questions. Don't worry you won't hurt me. Oh and one more thing, she says. Naruto looks at his instructor curiously. You better come at me with the intent to kill, Nico says calmly. What have I gotten myself into, Naruto thinks. Now come at me. Nico yells startling Naruto but getting him to move. Of course Nico barely holding her Bakudo loosely in front of her managed to pair Naruto's charge and hit him squarely in the stomach knocking the wind out of him. Again, Nico directs. Naruto manages to gather himself and get up. Arg! He yells as he charges. Nico didn't even wait for him to reach her as she flashes forward and knocks him down before he can really register what happened, well aside from the pain he's feeling. Oh you ch, he yells after the fact. Never yell like that on a battlefield. You are a ninja, you are to stay quiet and deadly. Understand, she asks him. Yes, Naruto struggles to get out. Yes. Naruto is too busy trying to breathe normally to figure out she expected more. Well until she hits him lightly over the head with her bakuto ouch, Naruto complains. Let's try this again, yes. Nico directs. Sensei, Naruto figures out. Good, now get up and try again, she says. Naruto manages to get to his feet, barely in charges although quietly only to get the same result as the first time. You're, slow, try again, Nico directs. What? That's as fast as I can go. Naruto complains as he tries to get up. Only to be hit in the stomach again. What did I say about noise, Nico warns. Sssari, sensei, Naruto apologizes. Good, do it again and it'll be worse, Nico warns. Worse, Naruto thinks this was a bad idea, he surmises. Nico seeing that maybe he's had enough for the day decides to give him a break. Let's call it a day for now. I want you to do 25 push-ups and 50 swings of the bakuto I gave you with both hands and run 5 laps around the school track before you go home, Nico says before disappearing. Where'd she go? Naruto looks around confused. Thinking he was alone Naruto started to head for the door. This lady is crazy, there's no way I'll learn anything from her, not before she kills me anyway, Naruto thinks. However, 
as he reaches for the door he stops and turns around. He gets on the ground and performs all 25 PUSHUPS and then after a break proceeds to do the 50 swings using both hands and then finishes his day by running 10 laps. Unbeknownst to him a shadow had lingered to watch his progress disappearing after the first lap. The next day Naruto arrived at 6.30 am hoping to get a head start on his instructor. However, once he entered the hall he found the ANBU lady already going through a strange dance moving about the floor as she seemed to swing her sword with precise movements. Naruto watched as his new teacher moved with strength and beauty. Then she stopped and focused on him. Do 25 push-ups, she orders Naruto. Surprise Naruto just stands there until she repeats the order. Your training starts now, 25 push-ups and do it quietly, Nico orders. This time Naruto starts to do the push-ups. Only to be stopped halfway through by a light tap on his left shoulder blade that sent him sprawling. Ouch. Naruto complains only to be tapped harder on the head. What did I say about making unnecessary noise, Nico responds. But I didn't make any noise, Naruto complains without shouting. You were making noise. Those grunts were noise, unnecessary noise, she tells him. Naruto sits there quietly trying to gather his thoughts. I already knew you were working hard. I don't need grunts or other sounds of exertion to tell me you were working hard to do as I asked. Now start again and this time quietly. Instead of complaining Naruto does as asked and managed to do all 25 without making too much noise. Good now 25 sit-ups, she directs. Naruto does 10 and once he relaxes. Womph. Oof, what's the big idea? Naruto screams only to be thunked on the head. Nico reaches down removes the ball that she threw at Naruto's stomach. This is called a medicine ball. It's used to toughen up the abdominal. When you do push-ups I want you to create a clone first and have it stand on your feet so you don't move around too much and at intervals of 5 or 10 sit-ups and truck the clone to throw the ball down not too hard but with just enough force onto your stomach. I want you to then throw the ball back to the clone and continue doing your sit-ups until you reach another 5 or 10 have the clone do it again. It may seem rough but if you trust me you will be much stronger, Nico advises. Naruto thinks it over for a moment and remembers his goal. He nods and they start again. Once he hits 10 he tightens his abdominal muscles expecting to be hit again. Which Nico does although she takes a bit more off the throw making it lightly impact his stomach. Naruto lies there for a moment thinking it wasn't so bad so he goes back and does another 5 push-ups when Nico throws the ball again this time harder. What was that for? Naruto questions. If you're always expecting to be hit your body won't get stronger. Now continue, Nico says. Instead of grumbling Naruto does as ordered and resumes his sit-ups now tensing up after every one. He makes it all the way to 25 before Nico throws the ball down again on his stomach. In response Naruto throws the ball as hard as he could back at the ANBU only for her to catch it easily. Now get up and give me 25 squats, Nico orders. Naruto notices she didn't put the ball away instead she pulls out a bigger one. A little worried Naruto starts doing the first squat. Nico immediately push throws it at Naruto's stomach. Surprised, but red he catches it. Good now throw it back and do another one, Nico orders. Naruto complies and does another squat as Nico push throws the heavier ball again at Naruto's stomach. He catches the ball a second time. Good, again, Nico says. They do this 23 more times where upon completion Nico seals the balls away into a scroll and picks up a scroll and unseals an item. Here use this to place your sword on your back, Nico tells him. She shows him how to place the strap so his sheathed sword slides right down in the holder on his back. Some swordsmen can use chakra to keep their swords in a position where they are easily accessible to them and ready to draw. You can fiddle with that on your own time now let's get moving I want you to try to keep up with me as I run, Nico directs. She doesn't even give him time to ask a question before she takes off running at moderate speed so he can keep up. 
Naruto immediately runs as they pass through the doors of the hall and then the doors of the academy and out into the village. Where are we going? Naruto questions when he catches up. Instead of answering Niko gets faster until Naruto is struggling to stay 10 feet behind her. They continue this way for 10 maybe 20 minutes until they reach a part of a park that was perfect for what Niko wanted to show Naruto next. They ran until they stood looking up at a huge mudan seemingly split in two with big rocky boulder jutting from each side into a crevasse which is where they stood at the bottom of. Alright take a 10 minute break, Niko says. Naruto immediately falls to his knees. What, are we, doing here, sensei? Naruto questions in between breaths. The pace they used to get here was faster than anything Naruto had previously done and he felt exhausted. I'll show you in a few minutes. Just catch your breath, she says. Naruto does as instructed and relaxes. A for a few minutes, ten to be exact, he notices Niko-sensei walk over to one side of the crevasse. I was told Iruka-san already showed you the tree climbing practice, Niko asks in a questioning manner. Naruto nods. There are several chakra control practices used to gain better control of your chakra this is one of the hardest outside of the practices used to control elemental chakra, Niko explains. Naruto wanted to ask what was elemental chakra. But before he could ask Niko strapped her right arm and hand to her waist immobilizing it and then stretched her left arm up until she was on the tips of her toes then latched onto one of the shiny black rocks with her left hand. She then pulled herself up only using her left hand and then used chakra on her feet that she placed up on the wall to anchor herself several inches above the ground. She then reaches up with left arm again until her left hand grips onto a higher rock on the wall and then proceeds to push herself up again and then anchors her feet to the wall with chakra. She does this several more times as Naruto watches before flipping back down almost soundlessly and then unstraps herself. I want you do what I just did, but for now we won't tie the arm you're not using to your side. You'll do this twice going as far as you can with both arms today and this part of our training will be done, she tells him. Hesitant Naruto does as he saw his new sensei did and walked to the wall and reached up with his left hand and focused Cherka to it. He then attempted to push himself up only falter as his hand slipped. You didn't use enough chakra. Unlike when you were doing the tree climbing practice these rocks are smooth and hard to penetrate with chakra not to mention wet from morning moisture that accumulates during the night. You need to use more chakra but not too much more figure out the right balance as you try again, Niko instructs. Naruto does as told forcing his chakra into the rock once he gains a firm grasp. He manages to do it and then pushes himself up and tries to place his foot on the rock wall only to slip. Thankfully he didn't have far to fall and lands on his back. Ouch, Naruto says as he lays there for a minute. Get up, Niko says not letting him relax. Naruto gets up. That's what makes this so hard. It's not just the rocks are smooth and slippery so it's hard to get a good hold on them even using chakra, but keeping your focus on your left hand and then anchoring your feet to the wall at the same time was difficult. Now try again, Niko orders. Naruto does as ordered but fails again. He tries a few more times before Niko stops him. For now we will come back to this one again tomorrow. Go over to those trees and use the tree climbing practice to go to highest branch and once there do 50 pull-ups, Niko orders. Naruto begrudgingly does as ordered although once he gets to the top of the tree he finds the branches weren't useful for what he was told to do so he used a branch a little further from the top that would take his weight better. Once they finished with that Niko instructed Naruto follow her again and they ran through the crevasse until they reached the other side where a lake was she then walked until she was in the middle of the lake. This is the third chakra control exercise I will show you the water walking practice. Just do what you did on the tree walking practice on the surface of this lake, she instructs. Naruto slowly steps onto the surface of the lake finding it easy as he slowly walks all the way to where Niko stood. Good job, now did you bring the Bakudo? Niko asks. Sorry sensei, I forgot and just brought my sword, Naruto admits. That's fine, it just means I won't go as easy on you as I planned. Get into your stance, Niko orders. 
here. Naruto questions. Yes, do it, she orders. Once he does Nico takes her stance using her Bakudo. And they clashed, but unlike yesterday Nico uses her true speed maneuvering the Bakuto so it blocks Naruto's strike and impacts him on his still scent of stomach hard making him drop his sword. Thankfully she catches it, but not him as he falls through the surface of lake and splashes around a bit. Nico allows Naruto regain his bearings and then instructs him on how to rise up from the water using only his chakra and how to use it to quickly sink as an evasion maneuver. Once Naruto successfully learned that they fought again with Nico giving Naruto no mercy sinking him again, but this time he manages to catch himself and only sink up to his chest and not all the way. They continued fighting in this manner for an hour with Naruto managing to stay on the surface of the lake for 10 minutes and actually managing to evade a few strikes before they call it for the day. As Nico said they train this way for the full two weeks every day and Naruto never forgot his Bakudo again. She didn't show him anything else as she continued to drill him every day on exercises and sword play. However, she did take him to a ninja supply shop and forced him to buy new clothing and as a reward for doing so she bought him a pair of ankle weights which she made Naruto promise to wear every day unless he was on a mission. In Orario Naruto and Bell were making quite the team having reached the third level and raking in enough money to pay back the guild and the debt his clan owed which thankfully wasn't much seeing as they were new and he was the only member so far. Even after paying all that money Naruto had just enough to purchase another sword from the guild costing him 5,000 valis. But today was the day and he'd be lying if he said he wasn't a little nervous. Walking into the classroom there are few people in the room so he looks for a place to sit. However, on the second row from the front of the class sat Sasuke so deciding that for today he'd do something different Naruto sat on the row behind Sasuke which was empty. Everything was going fine until Shikamaru noticed him. What the? Shikamaru starts when he sees him. Why are you here? He asks. Today's meeting is for graduates only, Shikamaru says pointedly. Well then, good thing I am a graduate. Don't you see the Hitai 8 forehead protector? Naruto questions. As of today, I'm a ninja, too. Naruto responds. Shikamaru just gives him a sour look like he still doesn't believe it. Of course Naruto had no idea that there was a classmate that was happy to see him. Shikamaru went down to his own seat next to his best friend. That's Shikamaru, where does he get off questioning me? If I wasn't supposed to be here I wouldn't just show up like some idiot. Of course that's only because he tried that before and totally got thrown out on his butt and detention when classes started up again. Naruto was proud of finally having his own forehead protector and after training with Nico had changed the colored cloth from blue to black. Anyway, as he was thinking this the door slams open and Sakura and Ino race in. Whoa, it's her, did she do something different with her hair? She looks really cute today, Naruto thinks. She's looking this way, Naruto thinks as she seems to be looking directly at him. A blush starts to form on his face. No, I said I was done thinking about her, Naruto tries to remind himself as she seems to run right towards him. Of course as he stood to greet her she runs right by him to the next row where Sasuke sits. Damn it of course it's Sasuke, Naruto thinks angrily. Naruto thinks about doing something when Irika enters the classroom scattering all the girls who were arguing about sitting next to Sasuke a moment ago. Some dark-haired kid took the seat Naruto usually sits in next to Sakura and Sasuke. As of today, you all have become full-fledged Nina. Irika starts, he he Naruto thinks as he just said that a couple of minutes ago to Shikamaru. However, you're still just Genin. The tough part's still to come. Irika tells them. From here on. You'll be in a squad of three and carry out your missions under your Jonin sensei, Irika informs the class. That seemed to catch most everyone's attention as they now started to think about who they wanted to team up with. And of course who they didn't want to team up with. I wonder who's going to be team up with Sasuke-kun. Naruto hears Ino ask Sakura from beside him. Of course, it's always Sasuke, there are other guys too you know. Naruto laments in his head. I don't care, 
as long as I get anyone but Sasuke. Naruto thinks, the groups have been determined so that the strength of the groups will be balanced. No for the assignments, Irika says starting to list the groups. Now then group 7. Uzumaki, Naruto. Haruno, Sakura. Irika started. Naruto wanted to stand up and cheer, but his lessons with Nico had ingrained even into his thick skull that ninja were meant to be stealthy not loud. His change and forehead cloth color wasn't the only thing that reflected that. His clothes which were mostly black except for his coat which had the red Uzumaki crest over a picture of a flaming white wolf like his summons that Nico had commissioned for him. Of course he had one teammate to go, not that he was thinking about that. And Uchiha, Sasuke, Irika continues. Yada. Sakura cheered forgetting about Naruto being on the team for a moment. Just great, Naruto thinks watching his CR. Former crush cheer over being with Sasuke. Of course as Naruto laments Sasuke being added to his group another classmate was also saddened that her name wasn't called. Irika continued to announce the remaining squads, not that Naruto cared. When he finished Irika dismissed the class telling them to return to meet their jonin sensei. Naruto walked outside to get a lunch when he saw Sakura. Sasuke, Sasuke, Sasuke where are you Sasuke? He hears her call out over and over again. Naruto knowing what would happen if he approached her walked past her. Hey, have you seen Sasuke, she calls to him. Naruto turns to face her. No, sorry I haven't seen him, Naruto responds and walks away. Sakura couldn't believe it. Was that Naruto? She wonders in disbelief. Meanwhile, at his apartment the Hokage and Kakashi were looking around. So, this is where Naruto lives, Kakashi muses. Yes, he'll be on your team along with Sakura and Sasuke from the Uchiha clan, the Sandy Aim Hokage says. They both look around a bit. What's this? Kakashi wonders out loud. It's a computer, the Sandy Aim says equally surprised. How does an orphan have a computer and one this nice? I've never seen one this advanced, Kakashi says. That's not the only thing that Naruto has received lately, the Sandy Aim says pondering the significance. What else? Kakashi asks. Well that sword sitting next to it is one thing, the Sandy Aim says. Huh, a sword, does he know how to use it? Kakashi asks. Not really. I had Nico give him a few lessons during the break but she hasn't reported anything unusual, the Hokage tells him. Nico huh, anything else I should know? Kakashi asks. Yes, he has a summons, the Hokage answers. A summons? Kakashi asks shock, you should try to get him to summon it for you. It's a personal summons like mine, Saratobi tells him. Huh, alone any of these three items would be suspicious enough to warrant an investigation, Kakashi says. Yes, but it's Naruto and he wouldn't do anything against the village, Hiruzen reminds him. Maybe, Kakashi ponders. I understand your suspicions, but just get close to the boy. In time he'll trust you enough that it's something to be concerned with he'll tell you, Saratobi says. Kakashi nods as they leave everything where it was. Two weeks later, Naruto climbed the ravine again after running, doing his push-ups, sit-ups, and squats with the med ice ball she gave him. He just finished getting a quarter of the way up the ravine when he spotted his former teacher and jumps down. Niko-sensei. Naruto yells as he runs up to her. Naruto who told you stop, she asks instead of greeting him. But. He starts only to be bopped on the head. Ouch. He complains. When you're training you're not to let anything disrupt you especially when you're doing something dangerous like climbing the ravine, she scolds. Sorry sensei, Naruto apologizes. It's fine and it's my fault. I knew you would be training here at this time and I wanted to make sure you were doing it right, Nico tells him. I promise sensei. I have been training every day like I promised, Naruto responds. That's good. How is your team, do you like them, and is Kakashi-sensei training you hard? Niko asks. 
How do you know about Kakashi Sensei? Naruto asks. Information is a ninja's primary trade, Naruto. Of course, I would check up on how my student was doing, Nico says. Naruto blushes, surprised she still cared enough to check on him. But then he thinks about what she asked him. My team, sucks. Naruto yells. Of course Nico bops him again. Sorry sensei, it's just so frustrating, he tells her. What is? Nico asks. Well, there is this girl I kinda like and she's on my team, but she's way into this other jerk who is also on my team and every time I try to talk to her she yells at me and tells me to go away, Naruto fumes. Even on missions? Nico asks. No, not on missions, Naruto admits. Then it's clear she doesn't like you and if you respect the boundaries, she will treat you better, Nico responds. Naruto nods. He knew that already, but it was hard. What about the training? Nico asks. Oh, that's a joke we barely do any of that and when we do it's light sparing and trust exercises, Naruto tells her. What? He hasn't drilled you on team formations or helped you learn a new jutsu or a better taijutsu. Nico questions remembering they were only a team for a few weeks. No, we did work on formations, but that's it outside of sparing and the trust crap, Naruto responds. Well Naruto you need to trust your teammates. Nico says, but in the back of her mind she was expecting more from her former senpai. Nico sensei since you're here could we maybe spar like we did when you were training me? Naruto asks her. Don't you spar with your teammates? Nico questions. Yeah, but Sasuke and Sakura only use basic weapons and Kakashi Sensei says we're not ready to spar with him, but it's more like he's too busy reading his perverted books, Naruto says. What's going on here? I know they're kids and it's only been two weeks, but is this really okay? Nico thinks. So sensei, would you please spar with me? I have the bakuto you gave me and everything, Naruto says eagerly. Truth was Naruto wanted to get stronger and he thought he should be more patient, but he learned more in those two weeks with Niko sensei and Irika sensei than he did in the two weeks he has been on team 7. Okay Naruto, we can spar, she relents. Yada. Naruto cheers only to be bonked on the head. Ouch, Naruto says rubbing his head. And I tell you what, give it another week and if nothing changes with how your team trains I will train you a couple of days a week as long as you promise to train on your own every day, Nico tells him. I promise sensei, Naruto says with a big smile. Alright, I assume you have been practicing like I showed you using the water walking practice to train your sword technique while also practicing your chakra control? Nico questions. Yes sensei, I use the water and the trees every day practicing my sword training, Naruto says. Good then get ready to show me how far you've come, Nico says. Naruto smile as he gets ready removing his shirt and jacket so they wouldn't get wet as they walk to the lake and prepared to fight. They both move to the center of the lake with Nico approving how he walked clearly showing he had been training as she told him, not that she didn't know since she had been watching him for a few days now. All right, Naruto. Whenever you're ready, Nico says with her bakudo ready. Here I come sensei, Naruto says before he charges. Alright, available D rank missions are walking the Inazuka dogs, pulling weeds for Mrs. Masuda, catching Tora. The chunin at the mission desk tells them. We'll take, Kakashi thinks. I'd rather walk the Inazuka dogs than those other ones, Naruto comments. Okay, what about the two of you? Kakashi asks. Tora, the enigmatic Uchiha answers. Tora, Sakura immediately answers following her crush's lead as she looked for his approval. Catching Tora it is, Kakashi says. Naruto had really grown to dislike his team. Kakashi was all about team bonding and deciding things in a way that was democratic instead of authoritative, which was liked by Naruto except for the way things worked out. Kakashi had a decidedly hands-off approach to his team to everything including their training except for things he deemed crucial like teamwork exercises and drills that were completely useless. 
Sasuke pretty much got his way because anything he said or did Sakura acted like was perfect and if he spoke out against it she was prone to react violently no matter if he tried to be tactful or not or if he was right or not. Kakashi just stood by not saying a word unless it was to tell him to try to get along better with his teammates. Alright since you got to pick the mission Naruto gets to choose the code names again, Kakashi says trying to be fair. Sasuke and Sakura both looked at him as they walked out of the assignment room. Let's just go with the same ones from last time, Naruto says already tired of this mission and being with his team. I've already explained this to you several times Naruto, even if we have done this mission a few times already new code names are essential because we are technically on a new mission. If I allowed you to get away with being lazy on a simple D-rank mission like this it might happen on more important or dangerous missions where a reused code name could get you or your teammates spotted and into trouble, Kakashi lectures. Fine, then you're mystic, she's blush, he's coal. And I'm straw, Naruto says after a few moments. Now your roles on this mission will be. Kakashi starts. Of course the roles were always the same. Sasuke got to flush the cat into the open, Sakura made a half-hearted attempt at actually catching the cat, and if he was slow to run up and grab the cat or Sasuke got scratched up instead of him well Kakashi would scold him about his lack of speed and Sakura would try to do what the cat always does and that is to scratch, claw, and try to pound him into the dirt. This was the first time they did the mission where it didn't go as normal. Cole here, target sighted, Sasuke says as the three genin moved into position. What's your distance from the target? Kakashi asks over their headsets far from them. It's five meters away, Naruto answers. I'm ready, Sasuke says confidently. Me too. Sakura chimes in. Straw? Kakashi asks. Ready, Naruto answers. Okay. Do it. Kakashi orders them. Naruto was gone before Kakashi said do and had managed to with speed and precision land on top of the cat and knock it out with a swift and strong blow to the back of its head before it could turn and proceed to bite or cratch him off. Naruto. Sakura yells. Huh. Naruto questions. Why are you being so rough with that poor kitty? She yells. Because the poor kitty as you call him, likes to bite and scratch when I don't, Naruto argues. That's still no reason. Naruto tunes her out, which was damn hard to do as he hands her the cat. He watches as she pets and holds the cat now that it's knocked out, but notices she dares not try to wake it. Kakashi arrives shortly thereafter. Good job, but next time Naruto try to be gentler, Kakashi says to them. Naruto also ignores him and they are soon off back to the mission's desk. Of course Naruto thought they should have waited until the cat woke up before presenting it to its master, but he was vetoed because Sasuke wanted to hurry up and take another mission and Kakashi just wanted to go back to reading his book. So what happened? Madam Shurjimi the bloated wife of the daimyo railed mostly at him since his team threw him under the bus before he or anyone else, i.e. only Iruka, could say anything in defense of knocking the cat out she wanted him arrested and she threatened to take her business elsewhere and have her husband reduce his business with Kanoha if she wasn't satisfied. The solution, his pay was severely docked and the woman walked off happy forgetting about her threats as she coddled, crushed, the already near lifeless corpse of the cat. The next mission for Kakashi's Squad 7 is an errand to the neighboring town, to babysit the chief counselor's boy, helping with digging for potatoes, eh. The Hokage continues listing D ranks they could do. Man these missions are so boring. I want a tougher mission, something that would challenge me. I've gotten so much stronger thanks to my training with Niko sensei and even Iruka has helped me every now and then when he has a free moment, but I haven't got a chance to show it yet. Mentally shouts a frustrated Naruto. The only reason he hadn't voiced said opinion out loud was because of Niko sensei's lessons slash torture on proper shinobi etiquette. Unfortunately Naruto had not been paying attention when once again Sasuke chose the next mission, which if he had been aware he would have heard Kakashi say it was because Naruto's carelessness with the client's object and nearly cost them all to have a failed mission and no pay instead of only Naruto having reduced pay. 
As Team 7 was leaving to dig for Potato's team they passed Team 8 heading in to report on their mission, but from the looks of it didn't go well. These missions suck ass. Kiba yells. Bark, co-signed his partner Akamaru. Kiba calm down, Kurinai seemed to try to get the genin to relax. I demand better missions. Kiba yells. Kakashi shook his head. I knew she wasn't ready to lead a team, Kakashi comments as the doors close. I'm sure it's not Karinai sensei's fault. Kiba has always been like that, all bark and little bite except for his puppies, Sakura says demeaning the loud boy. The Uchiha nods, but then looks at Naruto. I'm a little surprised he was the first loser to crack, Sasuke says with a smirk. At this Kakashi and Sakura both look at Naruto, before they resume their track. Some people just have no training, Sakura goes on to continue belittling Kiba. Naruto meanwhile knew what those looks were and it pissed him off not that he would give them the satisfaction. He was also getting the distinct impression that as Sakura was bad-mouthing Kiba she was also remarking about him despite the fact that he hadn't bothered her at all in the last month after he realized she still hadn't changed her opinion on him while he tried hard to leave her be. I hate this, team, Naruto thinks wishing the day was over already so he could return to Orario. Team 7 spent the rest of the day digging for potatoes. Well Kakashi mostly watched and Sakura mostly complained about getting dirty and despite the fact she and Sasuke received tools to dig with she complained about getting dirt under her nails. While Naruto was forced to use his hands to dig into the soil like some kind of animal, thankfully it was warm out and the ground was relatively easy to dig through. There had to be a technique he could learn to make it easier. Hours later Naruto heads home exhausted, aching and hands were bloodied, bruised, raw, and hurting from hours spent digging for potatoes. He was thankful that for whatever he thought about Sasuke, he was a hard worker. Problem was is that he and Naruto were the only ones. They spent the better part of the entire afternoon digging and Sakura dug up a handful of the dirty tubers while complaining about how he was supposedly not working hard enough despite the fact Naruto managed to dig up 130 or more of the crop compared to Sasuke's 80. And what was his thanks for his hard work? The client backed Sakura's complaints of him being lazy and said he intentionally bruised and damaged the potatoes saying that his pay should be docked to compensate for their losses which Kakashi only gave apologies and did what the client wanted while giving him that stupid half-assed eye smile saying it was better to comply with the client rather than cause a fuss. I want to murder them all, Naruto thought as he looked at the pocket change he was given for his efforts that day. Next time I will be lazy. Let Sakura and Kakashi do some work for these people. Nothing has changed since the academy, Naruto thinks. Honestly he didn't even feel like turning on the computer. He just wanted to lay down for a moment and heal, but he knew that he owed it to Amaterasu-sama plus once he was there all his anger and aches would go away so he turned on the machine and disappeared. Unfortunately a few hours later several knocks would go unanswered at his door. Welcome home Naruto-kun Amaterasu greets as he wakes up refreshed in the other world. Amaterasu-chan, were you waiting for me long? Naruto questions as he refocuses. He'd sort of gotten used to the transition, but it still felt a little weird to wake up in a different world. Not to mention she was always there for him, honestly this felt more like a home than Konoha ever did. No. Naruto, once you're done in the dungeon I want you to come straight here, Amaterasu directs him. Naruto nods in compliance. Okay, now run along I'm sure Bell is anxiously awaiting you at the dungeon, she tells him. Hi. Naruto yells as he gets ready for another day of adventuring. This was more like it, Naruto thought. He and Bell quickly met up and disseminated the first couple of floors. They rushed through the third and beat the fourth level with Naruto's doppelganger. They were now standing at the precipice of the fifth level. The normally light blue walks that signified the first four levels became to blend into a greenish color. Before them stood a light green hallway partially lit and they could see a goblin of all things teetering just at the end of their vision. Come on Bell, we've come this far, Naruto conjoles his friend hoping he will join him on this new adventure. But, but, that's the fifth level Naruto. 
We've never gone that far and Miss Aina told me monsters spawn a lot faster than on the first four levels, Bell warns. It's just a goblin, trust me Bell come on I'll even switch my doppelganger into adventurer mode instead of supporter mode, Naruto says trying to entice him to act. All adventurer mode meant was that Naruto gave his sword to the doppelganger and took out a second sword from a pack the doppelganger wore, that Naruto began to carry after learning it was something supporters did to support their teams, and then switched with his second regaining his sword again. The sword the doppelganger now while dead was a scimitar Naruto found late one night when he decided to explore Ororio after leaving the dungeons and Bell had left him on his own to speak with his goddess. He found it after he had unwittingly stumbled into the pleasure district, but to his surprise the first thing he saw upon entering was his own goddess entering a shop. Naruto had decided to follow her and also entered the shop, but was shocked to not find his goddess. What he did find was a store selling weapons. Now of course the better weapons were far out of his price range, but there was more affordable options mixed in with a couple of cheap ones and a few that had, see the owner, on it that looked deadly and strange. It was at that time the shop owner a woman of what Naruto found out was Amazonian lineage with light brown skin, lightly muscled, and crazy amber eyes boring into him. Long story short he bought the scimitar and was promptly shown the exit. He never noticed the hidden area in the shop behind the cordine the woman had come from. Naruto continued to try and find his gods with interesting to results but those stories are for another time. Fine but we're not going too far tonight, Bell says getting his courage up. Sure, Naruto says knowing Bell would follow now. Naruto and the doppelganger raced forward towards the goblin with Bell trailing slightly behind them watching out for traps or other monsters. Naruto easily reached the goblin not giving it a chance to fight back as he sliced it from head to toe in an instant as it poofed out of existence. However, they weren't given much time to recover as two more goblins appeared and attacked. This time Bell attacked one of the two goblins as his sword sliced into the goblin killing it and Naruto and his doppelganger easily teamed up to kill the third. That was exciting, Naruto comments. Wasn't it crazy the way those two goblins seemed to pop up out of nowhere? Bell questions. We are on the fifth level. I imagine we haven't seen anything yet, Naruto's double answers. As if on cue, monster shrieks and calls echoed into the hall and they all noticed red eyes watching them. Let's go back, Bell says suddenly not feeling too confident about going any further. Come on Bell, it's just some goblins and kobolds at this level, maybe some killer ants if we go far enough, Naruto responds. I'm sorry Naruto. But I'm not ready, Bell responds meekly. Naruto now noticing the look on his friend's face backs down. They could always try again another day when they were even stronger. He didn't want to force his first true friend into something he didn't want to do. Okay, let's go back, Naruto says. He takes the scimitar from his doppelganger packed everything up and switched his doppel back to supporter mode. Are you sure? Bell asks as they walk back towards the thankfully still close fourth level corridor. Yeah, come on buddy. We have plenty of time to reach the fifth level, Naruto muses with a smile. Yeah, Bell responds with a similar smile. But in the back of his mind, I have to get stronger so I don't hold Naruto back, was his actual thoughts. Bell and Naruto fought for another couple of hours on the fourth level before making their way back to the town. Naruto went straight home after leaving the dungeon, which Bell understood and also went home after stopping at the guild building. Goddess Amaterasu, I'm back, Naruto calls out. I'm in my room Naruto, she tells him. Naruto makes his way to her room finding the door open and the goddess sitting on her bed in an empty room. What's going on? Naruto answers confused seeing none of her things where they used to be. Naruto I made a deal with the goddess Ishtar, she informs him. Who's that? Naruto questions. I know you followed me into the entertainment district the other night. She reminds him. Uh. I. Naruto stammers. Relax Naruto-kun, her familia runs the entertainment district, she informs him. Oh, Naruto responds. 
She has allowed me to purchase a home on the outskirts of her territory not far from Babel, she says. Cool, will I have my own room? Naruto questions. Of course my champion and there will be a few more surprises the next time you visit me including some new guild members, Amaterasu tells him. We're getting new guild members, where are they are? Naruto questions. You will meet them when you come back. I think you will like, at least one of them, she responds. Them? Naruto questions. All in due time. Now is the time for you to sleep and go back to your old world, she tells him. Okay, Naruto responds as he turns to head for the couch. No Naruto-kun, stay here and sleep on my bed, she says getting up to make room for him. Are you sure? Naruto questions. She nods. Naruto walks over to the bed and without getting under the covers or taking off his clothes lays down. It wasn't long before he began to smell a couple of scents. The bed smelled of cedar and embers and, cinnamon. The smell managed to arouse several things in him while also calming him and making him drowsy. When you return, you will be in your new home and room and meet your team. I know you and Hestia's boy Bell have established a friendship but he's destined for different things. I want you to be right there with him. But Bell will form a team and you will also need a team of your own, Amaterasu tells him. Y E S God, D S, he mutters sleepily. Oh, and before I forget, when you wake up, remember to hold on to your sword and don't forget about Taki on your mission, she tells him. Me. S S. I was all he managed to get out before he was out and back in Kanoha. Sure, you want to trust Ishtar? A new voice asks her. Ishtar is fine as long as you don't cross her or say anything about Freya in her presence, she answers. Yeah, but bringing a boy like him into that den of, will he really be okay? The thing I like most about Naruto-kun is the way in which he endears himself to almost everyone. He won't fall prey to her charms. I'll make sure of it, Amaterasu answers. Meanwhile back in Kanoha. Naruto was immediately woken up by loud pounding sounds on his door. He groggily got up and went to the door in his boxers. Hey! What's with all the pounding? Trying to break. Naruto never got further as he was clocked by an irate pinket. Damn it Naruto! Put on some clothes! And hurry up! Sakura shouts. What? Naruto questions as he regains focus. Thanks to you loser, we had to delay our mission, Sasuke says coolly. Naruto now notices his entire team was at the door. Where have you been Naruto? Kakashi questions no book in sight. Huh? Naruto questions. We came to your house yesterday several times looking for you including a couple of night visits but you weren't home, Kakashi tells him. Shit, Naruto panics before calming and remembering yesterday. Well excuse me, but after digging with my bare hands because the client decided I wasn't fit to use her tools to dig her stupid potatoes up I was exhausted and fell asleep, Naruto responds back angrily. Kakashi gave him a searching look like he didn't believe him but then focused. Alright, but you need to get dressed and packed for a mission, Kakashi tells him. Oh boy, what is it now? Catching that stupid cat again or maybe this time it's digging for carrots this time, Naruto says with a yuck face. No, loser. That other loser Kiba and his team are in trouble and need our team to go and back them up, Sasuke responds before Kakashi could say anything. What? Naruto responds unintelligently. Yeah, and thanks to you we're really late. We should have been running to back them up yesterday, Sakura scolds him. I. Naruto, just hurry and get dressed and pack for a mission like I showed you, Kakashi says. HH hi, Naruto responds confused and still unsure. It took Naruto half an hour to get cleaned up, dressed, and packed. It only took half an hour because Niko sensei also stressed the importance of being prepared and gave him a method of packing quickly and being readied for everything. Naruto and his team were out of the village within 45 minutes when he answered his door. Naruto was wearing his black clothes and jacket with his sword on his back, 
but also now wore a balaclava face mask that covered his lower face and neck since this was going to be his first mission outside of the village and Nico stressed the importance of not showing everything in enemy territory. He just thought she was being crazy and overprotective which also showed that she cared which is why he did it. They had run 50 or more miles from the village and crossed over a small bridge before they were forced to stop. Sakura collapsed exhausted from running for so long. All right, let's rest here for a few minutes, Kakashi says having sympathy for the girl knowing she wasn't ready for traveling at speed for long distances yet. I, I'm sorry, Juest. Give e me, a minute, Sakura struggles to get out between breaths. Is everyone else okay? Kakashi asks as they all look toward Naruto. Naruto was of course just fine and not even sweating which pissed Sakura off. How can you, be okay? Naruto, Sakura voices not even able to muster up the energy to shout at the boy. Naruto just shrugs. I run every day and faster than what we were doing, Naruto says as sentimentally. Kakashi eyes Naruto as do his teammates. For Kakashi this was another thing to add to the list of growing concerns over Naruto since last night. Why is everyone looking at me? Sasuke doesn't seem tired either. Naruto questions. Of course Naruto couldn't know it, but this just angered, saddened, and made Sakura question her position on the team for the first time. Calm down Naruto, no one is questioning your physical abilities, Kakashi tried wanting to calm things down. At this Naruto wanted to be a brat and point out that they had all questioned his abilities and not just his psychical abilities, but having had a few conversations with Nico had basically told him it wouldn't be a good thing to do on a mission especially their first Nandi ranked mission. They gave Sakura a few more minutes before they pushed forward not going too far before reaching the area where Team 8 had camped. The first one to greet them was Kiba. What are you doing here? Kiba gruffly asks. We were sent to back up your team in this mission, now take us to where Kurinai and the client are, Kakashi says derailing any attempted conflict by Kiba or Naruto. Fine, come on but do try to keep up loser, Kiba says before taking off into the trees. Why that? Naruto starts to say getting aggravated. Naruto, calm down and don't start anything in front of the client, Kakashi warns. His teammates seemingly ignore him and follow behind Kakashi as they jump into the trees following Kiba. I wasn't going to start anything. I did not need the reminder. Niko-sensei instilled in me the need to be professional in front of all clients. Naruto thinks as he too takes to the trees. Turns out they weren't far from Kurinai's group as they had set up camp a mile off the road hidden by one of the many forests that encompassed fire country and walking distance from a stream. Kakashi-senpai, they sent you? Kurinai questions as Kiba and Team 7 came into view. Kakashi just nods. They all grouped together with the client joining them. They sent another bunch of brats. I really made a mistake when I chose the leaf village. Tazuna laments. Hey! Kiba yells. No one chose to admonish the Inazuka member since they all were slightly angered by the comment. If you hadn't lied about the mission we wouldn't have had any problems in the first place. Kiba yells at the old man. At this Tazuna had the decency to hang his head a little. What happened, exactly? Kakashi questions. Kurinai goes into detail in their fight with the demon brothers. Kurinai being a genjutsu master noticed the sloppy attempt by the brothers and when they moved to ambush her she gave them a view of hell and then easily bound them after Shino drained them of chakra with his kikechu. She then tells team 7 what they managed to get out of the brothers and the client. This is more than a C-rank mission Kurinai, you should have called the mission off and returned to the village, Kakashi admonishes the rookie instructor. Hi, Kurinai admits a bit somber and angry. Hey! We chose to continue the mission and called for backup. The drunk's a liar, but we believe what he told us about this gato person and couldn't abandon a client. Kiba argues loudly. Kiba! Kurinai yells at her short-tempered Jenin. KK Kiba does, not mean, 
Tita B. Arud, Hinata tries to quietly apologize for her teammate. However, he speaks the truth. Our two teams combined should be more than enough to escort Tazuna-san home and protect him while he builds his bridge, Shino comments. That's not the issue here. Kakashi starts to say. Come on sensei, they have a point. Why does it matter anyway, yeah he lied but apparently it wasn't to be malicious and he risked his own life as well to get this far, Naruto voices his opinion. Kakashi looked at the other two members of his team. Do you two agree with Naruto? Kakashi asks him. Sasuke quickly nods. This mission sounded exactly like what he's been looking for, not that he wanted to agree with either loser. And with him co-signing Sakura quickly nodded her approval. Although she was worried, having another team and Jonan did calm her. Alright, but this was your mission Kurinai so you should take the lead and I will back you up with my team, Kakashi says after a moment of mulling it over. She nods and then looks over the genin. Why don't we have Sasuke paired with Kiba up front scouting the way ahead and Naruto with Shino trailing the client in case something else happens, Kurinai says. Sounds good, Kakashi agrees. Naruto didn't care as long as he didn't have to deal with Kiba. Sakura was upset she wouldn't get to be with Sasuke, but this was a mission so she didn't voice the thought. She wasn't the only girl saddened by the pairings, but she was just happy getting to go on a mission with her crush. Kiba was both happy he didn't have to deal with Naruto, yet irritated at having to work with the Uchiha who thought he was better than everyone. Neither Shino or Sasuke cared much. Sasuke only cared about getting to fight in this mission and Shino was. Shino. They soon set off with Hinata and Sakura on either side of Tazuna with the Pinkette asking whatever questions popped up in her mind occasionally. The two Jonin trailing the group. So Kakashi, mind telling me why your group is just now showing up? That call for backup was a full day and a half ago? Karinai questions. One of my team was a bit hard to get a hold of, Kakashi answers his lone visible eye clearly focusing on Naruto. Huh, I have been told he's been a bit hard to find at times lately, Karinai says cryptically. Where did you hear that? Kakashi questions. It doesn't matter, the point is, that it's been noticed, Karinai says. Kakashi nods only breaking to field a couple of questions Sakura asks.